Now we're going to talk about us, um, tech for good, good for tech, technology or, and human, or human and technology. So Carlos will uh, take us in this field. So Carlos. Thank you, Francois. It's a, it's a pleasure for me to be again uh, in this prestigious forum. I was in Marrakesh, and uh, although I am 100% a technology person, the geopolitics of technology is going to be disruptive. And this is actually something that needs to be understood, how technology can inspire from geopolitics and how geopolitics can inspire from technology. In 20 years' time, we will have forgotten totally the COVID virus. In 20 years' time, the only thing we will have learned that in 2021, we enter into a digital society where human has lost the control of their digital identity. And that has an amazing, profound consequences. I was in the UN when the World Wide Web was developed in Geneva. I was at that time working on the, what it was the first node ever developed by the World Wide Web. Basically what Bitcoin is now, they are connecting nodes. So we were the zero node. And I was very young and very excited to see that for the first time, content and knowledge will be distributed globally. So people will have not, they need anymore to go to centralized databases. But at that time already, and this is 34 years ago, we discovered something that inside the architecture of the World Wide Web, the human does not exist. The web doesn't know where the human is. The web doesn't make any difference between a human, a dog, a, a tree, a computer. So at that time, nobody realized that there was consequences for that. But now those consequences are detrimental to humanity. And the reason is very, very, very simple. I wrote a book actually, which is a bestseller in the United States with the name Transhuman Code that has transhuman, because that's what we are becoming, transhuman, we're gonna be enhanced. But there is a code, which is our humanity. Humans cannot be replaced and should not be replaced, but that needs an action. We cannot just stay idle and see the fourth industrial revolution expanding without putting some brakes. We need an acceleration, but we also need brakes. And what is the brake? Everybody talks about acceleration. Acceleration is a $10 trillion economy. Facebook, Apple, Google, Amazon, these guys were zero value a few years ago, and now they are sitting in a monopolistic situation of $10 trillion economy and expanding 40, 50% per year. What is their product? What do they sell? They sell us, and why? Because they don't treat us as a humans, they treat us as a consumers. So we are consumers for them. And consumers don't have feeling, consumer don't care whether you have family or not. Consumer is something that you dispose the moment that consumer is tough to consume. So this enormous platform that has been created is actually growing exponentially. You know, humans are lineal. So for me to go from there to there, I have to go step by step. I cannot just jump and go to the next, to the next pilot. Technology is exponential, 12, 24, 64, 128. This exponentiality is accelerating by the fact that for the first time, technologies are converging. We are similar to where we were at the Renaissance, where you have different ge geometry, architecture, uh, philosophy were converging. Now we are in that process of convergence. The blockchain is converging. Artificial intelligence is converging. IoT is connecting one trillion devices now per year and expanding to something like 30 trillion uh, devices. Everything will connect. But will connect to where? Where are the things are connecting? And what is the role of the human into that interconnection? Actually, they are connecting to the metaverse. So maybe this is the first sign you hear that word, the metaverse. So the metaverse is going to be like the web in your, in your kids' ears every day because they live already in the metaverse. Maybe the only people don't live yet on the metaverse is ourselves due to our age and maybe the fact that we don't even know what it is. So the metaverse is the destination where all those NFTs, non-fungible tokens, are actually going towards. The metaverse is that virtual space where our kids playing games are spending many hours a day and where we think that actually they are losing their time. But when they talk to us back, they say, actually, dad, you don't understand what is going on. What I'm doing is actually living on the next generation evolution of the internet. The metaverse is internet 3.0. In that metaverse of 3.0, 
everything connects. And if you are not in the metaverse, you don't exist. Actually, companies are now creating themselves of the metaverse. Zero staff, no CEO, no CFO, no CTO. The metaverse is their living space. So in that metaverse, what is the role of the human? How can human be on that metaverse maintaining an evolutionary control that we managed to control during the last 200,000 years? The only way if is we redesign and re-architect the machine. But what is the problem? The problem is that because the product is the consumer and this $10 trillion economy is actually growing exponentially due to consumer behavior and because the consumer are giving them data that they can sell it, there is nothing else. There is no alternative. There is no a plan B. It's only a plan A. And because those countries then they are hosting those companies have a zero interest to make it different because they will destroy their digital economy. And I mentioned the United States and China now to that, to that point. The only place on earth that you can create a plan B is Europe. And the reason is because we were late. Actually being late on that has been an advantage. Why? Because we did not got addicted to that business model, which is to data mine and monetize consumers. And as our companies do not have that business model, because otherwise it would have been acquired by Americans or Chinese, there is a possibility to build a architecture or where the humans are the center of gravity. And where sharing humanity between ourselves becomes the motto, means that you will not develop technology that will go against human. You will not develop microchips and uh, uh, encryption that will be detrimental to human. You will protect human jobs, not necessarily by protecting jobs that machines can do better, but just by you know, benefiting from the fourth industrial revolution diversification. Eurohubs already success stories. There were some of them were mentioned. GDPR, it is a success story. It blocks the possibility of American companies coming and take your database and bring to their servers. It has also EIDAS, digital identification, which is essential to protect the human. Because if you don't have a digital identity, you don't exist. Actually, you might have a consumer identity, but you don't have a digital identity. Therefore, if you do not have a digital identity, and a digital identity is not your credit card or your passport or your fitness card, it is actually your birth certificate. As you have a birth certificate from the city you burn one day, you have also a digital birth certificate the moment you enter into the internet. And that belongs to you, and it stays under your consent while you need it. If one day you decide to retire, or you decide not to be bothered anymore with this digital Alive, you should be, have the possibility to revoke that digital identity, and that is back to your control. So, this morning, everybody was talking about Cold War. Actually, we are not anymore in a Cold War, we are in an invisible world. The invisible war between countries that they want to control the metaverse. And in the metaverse, imagine the metaverse is like a massive cloud. If, if you don't have your country in that cloud, if that cloud doesn't have a space for your country, you are colonized by others. You don't exist. So the fourth industrial revolution was a concept launched in Davos in the 2016 by, by the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab. I was part of that work that was done at that time. We have been working a lot to trying to create the awareness required for countries to take the right decision towards having their own presence on that metaverse. And this is something which I think this forum can help internationally to create this kind of diversification, which is essential to protect humans as we move forward in the fourth industrial revolution. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos, for this very inspiring, uh, so human as the future. Uh, I think <laughs> it was very interesting. Uh, I hope for our kids. Uh, I was very interested also by the metaverse. It looks like the neuronal topology of the brain. Yes. There is no boss, but if you don't part, you know, the system, you're out. But exactly. Absolutely. Okay.